My name is Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, a commercial illustrator, and a writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti. I am, of course, Aaron Lopresti. The reason I'm laughing is because this is about my fourth take trying to get this right. So I think I finally got it. Today is a special day because I'm not opening just one package, but two, count them, two. One of them is uh, Gary Martin's much anticipated art book. And the other one is a comic from the 80s that I have got so much grief from my fellow artists for not owning and never owning and having never read in my life. It's considered a classic. I've never had it. I finally reached out because of peer pressure and bought one. And it's not that I didn't want it. It's just that, um, well, it came out right during a period where I wasn't reading comics. So I just sort of missed it and then never went back and got it. But We'll talk more about that in a minute when we crack the thing open and see what it is. This is the first one. This is the comic book. Because I want to spend a little more time on Gary's books. We'll get this comic out of the way first. Now, this is a classic, as I said, and one that I've never owned, much to my embarrassment and chagrin. Uh, let's see if I can get it out of here without destroying anything. Looks like I got it figured out here. Okay. <clears throat> Packaged from the Home Depot so you know it's quality. Now this is a book that doesn't have a ton of collector's value. And that's simply because it's uh, from the early 80s, I think. Um, it was right during a period where I had uh, stopped reading books. I, I stopped when I was 16, which was 1980, and then didn't pick them up again until uh, 86, 87, when I was down at film school in Los Angeles and got to go to Golden Apple uh, comic book store in Melrose pretty regularly. All right, it looks like they threw in some extras here. <clears throat> Free comic book day, Ultimate X-Men. actually have the actual Ultimate X-Men number one, uh, but that's not why we're here. We're here for this. Crazy as it sounds, look at this. I have never owned a copy of the Marvel DC crossover event, and I believe this is the crossover event that ended the crossover events. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it ended it, but it was the last one I believe that they did. So it's not, it's not difficult to pick up a <clears throat> near-mint copy of this book, which, of course, I did because I'm all about condition. Um, let's open it up and thumb through it. This, of course, is by the, the great Walter Simonson, who I love to name drop as often as I can. He's a friend of mine from going way back. And uh, so it is kind of an embarrassment that I do not have not owned this book. Um Let's take a look in here. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's a Judas Priest. There's a subscription crease all the way down the middle of this book. Uh, I'm gonna have to send it back. Uh, on a $15 book, are you freaking kidding me? I should just keep it, but I'm not going to because it ticks me off. Uh, you guys can see that, right? Again, the great, the reflection <clears throat> from the light Tells the story. Where is it? We can see it on the front cover there. See that crease right there? Right going through uh, all the way down diagonally through the entire book. Insane. Man, you can't trust anybody. People are so unaware of how to actually grade comics. Um, I don't know. Maybe I could press that out if I cared enough to do it. Eh. I'll just keep it as a reader copy. What are you going to do? Anyway, so written by Chris Clermont, obviously drawn by Simonson, inked by Terry Austin. 
How about that? Uh, edited by Wheezy Simonson, but it was before she was Wheezy Simonson. It was still when she was Louise Jones. So when was this book published? Come on now. 1982. So I was indeed not reading comic books when this came out. So a lot of good Simons and goodness in there. So I will complain to the guy and keep this as a reader copy. Um, so we'll take a look at it later, but, uh, that page is torn. Well, I'm going to complain to this guy. Um, but anyway, I finally got a copy, and I will read it, and then I can be caught up with all my other friends who own this book and have chastised me for never owning it. So uh, there you go. Okay, let's take a look at this. Now, this I got from Gary. This is what I really wanted the book for. I'm joking, but when Gary said he had a copy of one of these and he was going to send it to me, I was thrilled. You're saying, what are you talking about, Aaron? I'm talking about the Bernie Wrightson Howard the Duck for President button from 1976. Get down, America. Vote Howard the Duck in 76. I just find it really interesting that for some reason... They didn't get Frank Bruner to do it. They didn't get Val Merrick. They didn't get Gene Colan. Come on, focus, baby. They got Bernie Wrightson to do it. And that's his signature right there. If this thing would just focus. Right there it is. I've always wanted one of these, but I was never able to get one. And now, through the kindness of Gary Martin, I've got one. But wait, there's more. Let's take a look at Gary Martin's art book called Brush with Destiny, if my memory serves. And being an old guy, you just uh, my memory never quite serves. How do you get two of these? Oh, Shelly must have ordered one too. How about that? How about that? All right, let's get rid of the the junk here and get down to business. We only need to look at one. Put that down on this painting mess that I've created on my paper. Okay, so there's a nice um, matte finish on these books, which seem to be the popular way to go. Um, I love that cover. I love that illustration that Gary did of himself, kind of like creepy looking guy working over his uh, page. Aaron, thanks for being in my corner. Your help and sage advice has been invaluable. Uh, Gary Martin, although it looks like Mary Martin, doesn't it? Hmm. To talk to Gary about his G. Um, thank you, Gary. That was very nice. And of course, we've got this nice little forward here to dedication to David Williams in his brohawk days. That's when he had the old mohawk. Um, <clears throat> got a nice little uh, intro here. Let's take a look at some of the art. That Ghost Rider is freaking awesome. Look at that. An Iron Man here. I mean, it's all awesome, but some pieces are going to stand out. I really like this one. Very Boland-esque. Yeah, Captain America. And there's the uh, the Wasp, I guess, right? But it's not the Wasp from the movie, so I wonder if this is uh, like someone commissioned Gary to do their face as the Wasp. kind of looks like that. Great piece. Thor. Hela. Here. 
Wolverine. We got Spider-Man one. That's pretty cool. Pretty sort of classic uh, Romy to take or Ditko, I guess, probably with those glasses. Um, did Ditko ever do the half face Spider-Man? He must have. He must have before Romita did. Like that. Uh, okay, Pride, Storm. Again, these look like they are portraits of people. So I wonder if they're people that commissioned him to uh, to put their faces on there or if he just you know picked random photographs or looks for them. There's Daredevil. Of course, there's all everybody's favorite uh, <clears throat> Captain Marvel, Doctor Doom, some just tremendous uh, ink work. There's some Batman. I love this one. Look at that. It's almost all black with some negative space in it. It sort of defines the uh, picture. More Batman, and he shows you exactly his process here. And he gets to this. Um, some nice Boland Jokers. Great face right there. Harley Quinn. Look at that. Look at that motorcycle pic picture with a bad girl. Um, the Huntress here. Bad girl, I guess. Catwoman. I love that one. Nice poison ivy. Ivy. That's a dramatic Supergirl if I've ever seen one right there. Helen Slater, Gal Gadot, another Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman there, Marilyn Monroe's Power Girl. That sort of looks like uh, a little bit like Sophia Loren as uh, uh, you know that girl from, uh, I can't remember her name. I'm not a G.I. Joe fan, but uh, you guys that are will know. Vampirella. Star Wars poster recreation on Solo. Princess Leia, Darth. Um, what's her face that does that stuff? Um, Stormtrooper or uh, one of those pilots. Boba Fett, how about that? And again, he, he gives you a shot here of what his pencil looks like before he goes in and starts inking with that brush. I'm going nuts. All right, some alien stuff. That's a great picture right there of Ripley. And then uh, what's her face from... from Aliens. He's got some planet stories, some recreations here, a magazine, some army stuff, some rock and roll stuff. Great Frazetta cre creation. Holy crap. Um, weird Science Fantasy number 29 cover. That's from the Lord of the Rings portfolio, the Kubla Khan portfolio. Flash Gordon action there. Prince Valiant. Holy smokes. Look at that. Some Jack Davis recreations here. Um, this Hank Porter. More Jack Davis. More Drucker. Wally Wood. Oh, look at that. Super Duper Man from Mad Magazine number four, I think. Bat Boy and Ruben. Uh, that's another Wally Wood one right there. Both these are, of course, all this wood machinery. Uh, Pogo, oh, look at that. Walt Kelly. That's a nice sovereign recreation of King Cole. There's uh, Gary's Space Girl right there that he wants to do a series on, and that's his next project. Oh my gosh. So he recreated the uh, the rights and piece, the wraparound cover from Rights and Frankenstein. Holy smokes. Look at that. 
Just insanity. There's some more rights and that's half the cover from the wraparound cover from a saga of the Swamp Thing number two that reprinted uh, Swamp Thing three and four. This is from Saga of the Swamp Thing number one, which re reprinted uh, Swamp Thing one and two. But these are again recreations of those by pieces by Wrightson. Ah, classic. Look at these. These recreations, man, just nuts. So good. Look at those rights and recreations. I mean, you have to like, you have to like, look at this with a magnifying glass to tell the difference. Uh, Doc Savage, or pardon me, um, uh, recreation of um, Rocketeer. I think this was an ad, or it might have been. I know this art was used for something. This may be. You know, commission that someone asked him to put the Doc Savage logo up there. Dave Stevens Pulp Adventures magazines, The Rocketeer. Look at that. These are all, of course, Stevens recreations. Holy smokes. Look at this stuff. Here, this is interesting because that's a. Uh, line work recreation of an Alex Ross painting. Pretty amazing. Some Kirby stuff up here. Buscema, Kirby. Um, Neil Adams, Mobius. So there you go. We've kind of flipped through the whole thing. Uh, just some amazing artwork in this book. If you really want to study brush inking, and uh, this is the guy to look at. Uh, just amazing control and uh, is able to do things with a brush that most of us can't even do with a pen. So uh, congratulations, Gary. What a tremendous effort uh, putting this book together and uh, just a real treat. I believe Gary still has uh, copies of this book available. Uh, you can get in touch with him at uh, through Twitter at um, uh, at Gar uh, at G Martin Inc. and uh, I think he's the same on uh, Instagram. Uh, but he's somebody you can reach out to, and uh, he's on uh, Graybeard Studio, another show we do right here on this channel. It's a draw stream. It's the best one on the internet with uh, David Williams, Kelsey Shannon, and the occasional guest star. And uh, Gary's on there every week, so you can, you know, tune into that uh, Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Pacific time, and reach out to him in the chat as well. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to get a hold of Gary if you want a copy of this book and you haven't done so yet. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we have the greatness of Gary's book here with the hard the duck election button from 1976 and the disappointment of, once again, inferior grading. But again, I'll just keep it as a reader copy and uh, that'll be that. Uh, I will complain to the guy though. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining me on Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti. Of course, I am Aaron Lopresti. Uh, be sure to tune in to watch uh, Aaron Live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And as I previously mentioned, Graybeard's studio at uh, 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. And then uh, I show up occasionally other places. So I'd like to also make you aware that I do have a campaign right now uh, for a graphic novel called Kit Carter Planet Doom. You'll find the description, or pardon me, the link in the description of this video. And you can click on that and it'll take you right there. So everybody, thank you again. Appreciate you. Hit the like and subscribe on your way out the door. And we'll see you next time right here on Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti.